In this video, I intend to share with you the basic idea behind formulating a hypothesis. Let's begin. What is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is a proposition or it's an idea that can be tested. Now, for example, social distance of greater than one meter keeps you safe from COVID-19. Yeah, so definitely there was some sample collected, they were taken to the lab, they tested and they came up with the idea or with the confirmation that social distancing is important. And that's why we are having this uh, social distancing, okay? Um, while COVID-19, yeah, it's uh, taking a serious toll on us, yeah? So in formulating the hypothesis, you need to be aware of two things. You need to know the null hypothesis and you need to know the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is denoted as HO and the alternative hypothesis is denoted as H1 or sometimes it's HA. Yeah? So what is the idea here? Yeah? Usually the idea or the proposition that we want to test, it's the H1. Our concentration, it's on H1. This is the potential result that we are expecting. We are expecting to find out a relationship. And there is a specific result that we expect. HO is the boring one. Yeah? Uh, it's opposite of what we expect. Uh, for example, there's no relationship or something like that. So once we have written our hypothesis and we have conducted certain tests, we need to make a decision. And when we are making decision, our, hypo our hypothesis that we will look into is HO, which is the null hypothesis. Is either we reject the null or we do not reject the null. So we reject the null if evidence supports your H1. And we do not reject the null if evidence do not support H1. Yeah? So remember, as an investigator, we want to collect enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Now, you also should be aware on the mathematical symbols used in hypothesis. For the HO, there is always an equal sign it. And where else? For your alternative, which is H1, it's without an equal in it. For example, if your HO is equal, your alternative will be not equal to. And if your HO is lesser than or equal to, then your H1 will be greater than. If your HO is greater than or equal to, then your H1 will be lesser than. So try to see over here. In HO, you have the equal sign. Where else? In your H1, there is no equal sign. Yeah. So this is how you need to write your hypothesis. Let me give an example. According to Cash, on average, guys take less than two minutes to shower. Jasmine does not agree. She says it's impossible and she wants to check. So she wants to investigate. So your HO will be guys shower time is lesser than or equal to 2 minutes. The alternative H1 which Jasmine wants to test is guys shower time is greater than 2 minutes. Now, if you look into the 2 minutes here, it's technically, okay, we can refer this as a hypothesized mean. So we can also write it like this. And you will see most commonly it will be written like this. Where for your null hypothesis, okay, the mu here is the hypothesis, hypothesized mean is less than or equal to 2 minutes. And for H1, your hypothesized mean, which is your mu, is greater than two minutes. So that's how you write your hypothesis. Let's look into another example. We want to test whether the mean business analytics final score of UITM students is different from 70%. Yeah? So your HO is 
your hypothesis mean equal to 70. Now, because we say it's different from 70, so it can either be greater or it can be smaller. So that's where our H1 here, the hypothesis mean is not equal to 70. Now, for example 3, we want to test if UITM students take less than 7 semesters to graduate. So you see, we want to test is technically already representing your alternate. We want to test, yeah, on average. So, your HO, the hypothesized mean, is greater than or equal to 7. And your alternative hypothesis is your hypothesized mean lesser than seven semesters yeah so this is how you write your hypothesis now you need to understand a basic idea of hypothesis testing what happens is that you have an entire population and in order for you to test your hypothesis what you do is that you are just going to pick up a small sample yeah being rational collecting data of the entire population, first, is going to be very costly. Secondly, it's going to be time-consuming. Yeah, so therefore, we will pick a sample. Yeah, so you see, when we are picking up a sample and testing your hypothesis, it can contribute to certain errors, which we call error in hypothesis. Yeah, we have two types of errors. We have type 1 error and we have type 2 error. Type 1 error is when we reject the null while it is true. So it means you were not supposed to reject the null, but you reject it. Yeah, And we denote type 1 error as alpha. Type 2 error is when you do not reject the null while it is false. It means you were supposed to reject the null, but you did not reject it. And we denote type 2 error as beta. I'm going to share with you some solutions to reduce these errors. Let's look into type 1 error, okay, where you reject the null while it is true. How do we counter this problem? The chances of making type 1 error, alpha, is called the significance level. So if we select alpha equal to 0 0.05, it means the likelihood of type 1 error to be prevalent is only 5%. Higher the confidence coefficient, which is 1 minus the alpha, 1 minus 0 0.05, if we have selected a significant level of 5%, it will equal to 0 0.95. It means we are 95% confidence that we have able to lower the risk of committing type 1 error. So that's why in our test statistics, alpha plays an important role. You can even select an alpha lesser than 0 0.05. Type 2 error. Yeah? You do not reject the null where you are supposed to. Yeah? So type 2 error, it's difficult to control. A common solution suggested by most of the statistici uh, statisticians is to increase the sample size. Yeah, when you increase the sample size, you are actually increasing the power of the test. Yeah, because as your sample size increases, okay, there are higher chances that your results will be much more better and stronger. Yeah, so this is how you avoid your type 2 error. So it's very important in your hypothesis testing, you need to pay attention to this type 1 error and type 2 error.